Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Florida Hippie here. Um, I was just looking at some articles. This one that I have on the screen is dated January 25th, 1859 and it's from the Daily Evening Standard, New Bedford, Massachusetts. So I was doing some research on some Florida mounds and in this newspaper there was another article about giants and it really was interesting so I decided to do a video on it. So here we go. Giants. A gentleman from Topsfield, Essex County, the tallest man in the county, measuring 6 feet 8 inches in height and who occasionally visits this city, has written the following article on giants which appeared originally in the Newburyport Herald. It is a tall article, he he, throughout written by a tall man and we think will interest all pygmies under 5 foot 10. Well, that would be me. With a higher aspiration than that of Augustus Caesar, who arrogated to himself a genial logic legitimacy, from the Trojan dynasty through the adulation of Virgil, of Virgil, I have essayed to trace my own high standing, boy, this guy is a comic, to the loftier order of antediluvian magnates designated by the oldest voracious historian as men of renown, which is the men of renown that they talk about in the Bible who were here before the giants. But it is in the legitimacy of democratic principles that I claim a connection with these heroes only as of them, but of the same divergency of predisposed nature adapted to circumstances that achieve their notoriety, all mankind being of one blood and possessing an adaptable principle with different developments wrought out by different influences, while the resolution of the principle and its exertion is among the mysteries. These mighty men were looked up to for those qualities which were peculiarly called into requisition at this early period. Saul was chosen king of Israel as late as 1095 B.C., for no apparent policy, but his being, quote, from his shoulders and upward higher than any of the people, end of quote. It being the custom in primitive times to select the tallest man their king, leader, or champion. There is at the present day a nation in Africa where female expansion is a passport to royalty, the greatest lady being selected for the envied station of queen. Among the Moors, so anxious are the mothers to dilate the charms of their daughters that they are compelled to eat immoderate quantities of food to enlarge their capacities. It being an adage among them that a, quote, a handsome woman is a load for a camel, end quote. Sterling weight seems to be universally estimated by the fun. The existence of giants has been affirmed by all ancient writers, although involved in myth and exaggeration. Hesiod, a writer of the 10th century BC, speaks of the three sons of Coelus and Terra having 50 heads and 100 arms each, and of their placing Asua on Pelion to scale heaven in their contest with the gods. Homer, a writer of the same century, says that Titan, when reclining, covered nine acres of ground, and that Polyphemus ate two of the followers of Ulysses at once and used a staff in walking as large as the mast of a vessel. The Greeks, at the siege of Troy, and Turnus in his war with Eos, 12th century B.C., are represented to have hurled stones that four of their successors were unable to move. Sancho Nyathon, the oldest profane historian who flourished in the 13th century BC, 
speaks of giants having existed at an earlier period. The first authentic description of giants is the concise mosaic antediluvian account that there were giants in those days. The post-diluvian is at the Israelite conquest of the Promised Land in the beginning of the 15th century BC. Moses sent spies to explore the land who returned with the report that they came to Hebron, so called after a son of Caleb and originally called Abra from a giant of that name in the Anakims, father of Anak, where Ahiman, Shishai, Salmane, children of Anak were and there we saw the giant sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And all the people that we saw were of great stature. The land of Ar, once possessed by the Emmons, was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt there in olden times, a people great many and tall as the Anakins. Og, king of Bashan, a part of Baru is represented to have been the remnant of the giants. Goliath of Goth in Philistia or Palestine proper, extended from Joppa to Gaza, appears to have been the giant champion of his country and period, 11th century BC. The Patagonians of the present day average six feet and have giants of seven or eight feet high. The children of a Prussia regime of Grenaders exceeded the common stature. So far as we can learn from sacred, profane, or modern history, giants may be considered as incidences rather than coincidences of nature, with sufficient stamina to maintain the characteristic for a period, but not in perpetuity, and that the essential features of the human race has been the same from the beginning, and that moral, political, social, and climatic, with their host of subordinate influences, have affected the natural diversity in the human race. As Cambron lays down the principle in animal physiology that any color can be produced and that the fat can be directed to that part of the organism to suit the epicure, and sheep become moving cylinders of fat and wool, and as Florence asserts that the most minute peculiarities of human external features, as well as the grosser conditions of stature and bulk, are capable of being transmitted, and as Fowler affirms that offspring are predisposed by the periodical temperament of the paramount, of the parents of the parents although we may not reach that psychological climax in science by which we can mathematically propagate individual characteristics undeviatingly or form an artificial race individual or trait to a certainty still we may resolve the general principles of predisposition and adaptation physical and mental to the amelioration of the race and induce a peculiar people zealous of good works. So, I know that's a lot of blah 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 and I guess they're saying that, you know, there is a branch of genetics that goes from one generation to another that carries these giant traits. And even though we can't do it now, which in the 1850s they couldn't, but now we can with, you know, genetically predisposed um, eggs and sperms in a laboratory somewhere, which is, you know, what a lot of this stem cell stuff and cloning is going to in the future, um, we can do it. And obviously in the past, they could do it as well. So were the giants like genetically manipulated? Was it a just a random strain of nature that 
happen to propagate through humans? I don't know. I tend to think that it was the fallen angels that came into the women, um, probably not by consensual means, and somehow they genetically modified the embryo that so that they could get in there and live a human life. Um, but that's just my thoughts. But I definitely believe in giants, and I believe that there was gigantic mega giants, like the one that laid down in this article and was supposed to be spanning nine acres long. And again, that's just my belief, but I've just seen and read too many things that make me think that that is true. So, to go on with the article. The bed of Og was 16 feet long and 7 feet broad. The height of Goliath was 11 feet, his coat weighing 159 pounds and his spearhead 19 pounds. The body of Orestes, son of Agamemnon, leader of the Grecian expedition against Troy, was 11 and a half feet high. The giant Galbera, brought from Africa to Rome in the first century AD, was 10 feet high and a woman 10 feet. Maximus, a native of Spain, the Roman emperor, was 9 feet high. Maximus, originally from Thrace, another Roman emperor, was 8.5 feet high. His wife's bracelets, bracelets served him for finger rings. His strength was such that he could draw a loaded wagon, break a horse's jaw with his fist, crush the hardest stones with his fingers, and cleave trees with his hands. His ferocity was equal to his strength, eating 40 pounds of flesh and drinking 18 bottles of wine daily. Holy crap, that would be such a really high public spill. Byrne and O'Brien Irish giants were eight feet high. A Tennessean giant lately died seven and a half feet high, weighing more than 1,000 pounds. Hmm, I never heard of that one in the 1850s. The Canadian giant, eight feet. But these are pygmies compared to the representations of human skeletons found in different parts of the world. Strabo a writer of the first century BC speaks of a skeleton 60 cubits long found near Tangier, Africa. Pliny, a writer of the first century AD, says a human skeleton was exposed by the overthrow of a mountain in Crete 46 cubits long. And that's pretty interesting because I was listening to a channeling session of the Palladians by Barbara Messiniak, and she said that long ago, um, you know, people that were wandering across the desert, nomads, gypsies, they would find shelter in these giant skeleton heads. They, they would go in there with their horses and their people and everything, and they would hang out there for the day and get some shade. Okay, so where was I? At Totu, Bohemia, AD 755, a skeleton was found whose head could scarcely be encircled by the arms of two men and whose legs were 26 feet long. Wow. At Mazarino, Sicily, in 1516, a skeleton was found 30 feet long. In 1548, a second one of 30 feet. In 1560, a third of 33 feet, confirming the Cyclopean descriptions of Homer and Virgil. Simon Majolus speaks of a skeleton found A.D. 1171 in England, taking taken from a breach in the bend of a river, 50 feet long, a skeleton, crap. A.D. 1913, near an old castle in Dauphiny, says the French journals, a brick sepulcher was found 18 feet from the surface. 
It was 30 feet long, 12 feet high, and 8 feet deep, with a gray stone inscribed, Theodobocus Rex. A skeleton was found in the tomb 25 and a half feet long, 10 feet across the shoulders, and 5 feet through the chest. Darn. I'm 5 feet 1, so I would be able to, like, just stretch out and be the same size as his chest with teeth the size of an ox hoof. And, you know, a friend of mine gave me a crystal that he found, um, where was it, Mount Shasta out west. And I swear this thing is a freaking petrified tooth. It fits in the palm of my hand. I have a small hand, but the thing is like two by three inches. It's, it's amazing. Uh, let's see. Okay. It's interesting too that the name inscribed was Theodobus Rex. And then they, they have what's called, you know, the T-Rexes and all these skeletons that they find. But, you know, are they actually dinosaurs or are they freaking people? Okay. Um, the Dominicans in Valence, Dauphine, near the banks of the Moderi, found the bones of a giant 22 feet high, of whom the monks preserved a painting in fresco. Riolan, a celebrated ato uh, anatomist, says a tomb was discovered near St. Germain, Paris, which contains the skeleton of the giant isolate. 20 feet long. In digging a ditch near Rowan in 1519, a tomb was discovered with a copper plate inscribed, Here lies the bones of the Chevalier Racon de Valimont. It contained a skeleton 20 feet long and whose head would hold a bushel. Uh, Platerus relates, let me get to the second page, that he saw at Lucerne bones of a person 19 feet long, the gaunches of the canaries, skeletons covered with skin, you know, embalmed by the sarcophagus rocks were found, says a traveler, 15 feet long. The Magellan navigators allege that skeletons were found near Cape Desire, 11 feet long. A number of skeletons were lately exhumed in one of the western states, whose average height was 8 feet. Oleus Magnus says that the skeleton of a woman was found in Germany, 70 feet long and 5 feet broad. The German, the African gentleman of 90 feet the German lady of 70, the Californian lizard whose vertebrae was 83 feet, the Megatherium, a great monster of Buenos Aires whose ribbed intestine chamber was sufficiently capacious for the tallest member of the Geological Society to walk erect, and six feet in width, whose thigh bone was three feet four inches in circumference. So they know the difference between a person and a monster or whatever they would think that the bigger animals from way back when were. And that's why I believe a lot of this stuff because people say, oh, well, they were probably talking about, you know, it was probably an animal or something that they dug up or a, a, a dinosaur. But I, I don't think so. Okay, so... I am down to... And the imaginary turkey of Dr. Hitchcock, whose conjectural stride by footprints discovered in the Connecticut Valley was seven feet, and the Dinorus fantopus... That's interesting. The phantom dinosaur that we're just talking about if they're really real or not. Or great wingless fossil bird 
were probably contemporaries, but which of the fattest magorial cycles they occupied, I leave to the determination of the exquisites. So I guess we are the exquisites because we are determining if this is crap or not. Now I know a lot of stuff, you know, can be made up, but I'm telling you guys, I've been researching and researching and researching for many years, probably at least a decade. That's all I do. Besides, I raised my kids. The last one's 18 now. And now I'm just, you know, starting a YouTube channel about all this stuff. But yeah, so it's up to you to decide uh, what you think. But I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was pretty interesting.